the Tri Basin Divide area is is a place where kind of the river meets the mountains. This is one of the most intact systems anywhere. It has a special magic, kind of the magic that you can only get when you have to drive for a really long way on a bumpy road to get here. It really surprised me when we started working on this project and we committed to doing the work with the Forest Service. It wasn't until the following summer that the Forest Service figured out the mileage that we'd be reconnecting. And I was blown away that just by reconnecting four small to medium-sized culverts that we were able to connect 21 miles. The Tri-Basin area in Wyoming is Wyoming high country at its finest. Actually, it's named the Tri-Basin area because it's at the headwaters of three different streams that flow into three different entire large river basins. People don't necessarily think about the necessity of fish to be able to move like terrestrial animals. We all know about bird migrations, we know about ungulate, elk migrations, but fish need to move as well. So be able to access these headwater habitats and then move downstream throughout the Grays River system, down connecting to the Snake River is so important for sustaining this species. When you think about 21.3 miles of cutthroat spawning habitat being blocked, first thing that comes to my mind is how long has it been blocked and why hasn't it been fixed before? In my career I've never seen an opportunity like this in cutthroat country to open up so many miles of habitat that was once open that's been blocked for an unknown number of years. So it just blows my mind that the opportunity exists and I'm really, really excited to be part of fixing it. The Tri-Basin Fish Passage and Watershed Restoration Project is one um, we've been working on for about two years and through the project we are going to be reconnecting over 21 miles of stream habitat for Snake River cutthroat trout in the Upper Grays River. Mainly what we're going to be doing is replacing four undersized culverts. Oftentimes you drive over um, in a given day tons of small undersized culverts and you might not notice them but in many cases they can actually be barriers for fish passage. When we first saw this big culvert I think I scheduled a field day with the three different Trout Unlimited program managers from the three different um, basin divides and I think we had popsicles on the big perch pipe up there one day a hot hot summer day and um, I, uh, I have a picture of everybody sitting on this massive pipe that's perched about a foot and a half out of the water and we're all like, how does, how does a pipe like this exist in prime cutthroat country? And the, the answer is simple, the Forest Service can't afford to fix it. The failing infrastructure, that's probably been blocked for 15 years. It was an interesting project because it started out as a timber sale. What happened was that as part of the timber sale, the Forest Service knew that they were going to have to fix up the roads in this general area to make it so that timber trucks could get in and out of here. And they saw it as an opportunity to say, well, if we're gonna be fixing the roads up anyway, let's look at all the stream crossings in this area and see where are the barriers. Partnerships are an important part of pretty much any project that we work on at Trout Unlimited. The partnership with Trout Unlimited really is seamless. So we we interact from the you know the initial conception phases of a project all the way through its its implementation, and um, being a nonprofit organization versus a state agency, we each have our strengths and we have our challenges. And so working together, we're able, again, to really leverage that to maximize our efficiency. Well, without Trout Unlimited, none of this would be possible. They give us the, the capacity to do these large infrastructure projects that would take us 
decades, decades to fun, if ever. I'm just happy to see like fish feeding like that, you know, like, oh, I, don't, I don't have to catch it. My hope is when we're done with the project that we all walk away pretty stoked on the outcomes and the benefit for fish. In the future, with the warming climate, these headwater streams are going to be just even that much more important to native cutthroat trout because they rely on cold water. And so knowing that we're working at the very headwaters of the Grays and then seeing that sign that says Grays River, watch me grow, it's pretty special to know that we're, you know, we're impacting, positively impacting 21 miles up here.